I kid you not, you couldn't make it up. These sorts of things are happening because people voted for known morons and liars to somehow deliver a better life for them. That's what's happened here. It is maddening. If I didn't like fish and chips so much, I'd be begging people to rescue me from this island of lunatics. Most of the fish that's sold in British fish and chip shops isn't fished in British waters. So I'm even going to get to struggle to get that. Actually, haddock, we do fish haddock. Haddock's, haddock's nice. I like haddock. I may, I may be okay. If you like cod, you're probably buggered. Welcome to the video, guys. This is something I never really wanted to do. But given the complete nonsense spouted in this video I'm going to cover here, it had to be done. I take no pride in pulling apart someone's YouTube video they have taken the time to make. I prefer to destroy mainstream media shit weasels and the tripe they spout, as you all know. But this has to be done, like I said, when someone is talking Joe Swinson levels of bullshit about Brexit and the fishing industry in general while showing us new levels of Brexit derangement syndrome to top it all off. Consider it an educational video, guys. Before this was sent to me, I had never even heard of his channel, but based on this video, he must be either a Labour or Lib Dem voter that is also an ardent Ramona, on par with the likes of old Stop Brexit Steve in more ways than one. Now, as you all know, there are legitimate reasons to shit-talk Boris Johnson since Brexit Day last month in regards to fishing and a few other things that could have been spoken about by this YouTuber instead of creating a video full of nonsense statements based on who knows what evidence because a lot of it can easily be debunked with common sense and the rest with a two-minute Google search on the fishing industry to bring up the actual statistics on this matter, which this guy either did not bother to do or completely ignored because it does not fit the narrative he is trying to push. Instead, to me, this comes across more like a Guardian article in the opinion section as not one source is cited throughout. But anyway, enough of that. Let's open up this shit show like a tin of baked beans and use some actual facts from the fishing industry itself. We all know the story. Goodness knows Nigel Farage and his Brexit party lunatics told it often enough. When we leave the EU, Britain will control its own waters and all the other fishermen can bugger off. British fishermen will have complete run of the place. And some of them seem to buy that, even though it made no sense whatsoever if you look at any of the detail at all. British fishermen in British waters catch more fish than is sold in Britain. We don't really eat that much fish. Wow, we're less than a minute into his video and we already have a serious case of Farage derangement syndrome. In his own words, the Brexit party lunatics apparently claimed fishermen would have the run of the place, like they all expected to be able to catch as much fish as they want and sell it all, because sustainable fishing wouldn't be a thing anymore after Brexit. I guess in his world, only the EU cares about fish stocks when back here in reality, sustainable fishing will still be a thing, and I am pretty sure not a single fisherman thought it would be open season on all fish after Brexit for even a second. They simply knew Brexit should mean less EU boats fishing in our waters, making it easier to catch the quotas set by our own government, rather than quotas set by Brussels while competing with half of Europe's boats for our valuable fish. You know, the real meaning behind taking back control of the waters around this country. That means the elected government set the rules who we hold to account at the ballot box. That is taking back control, not turning our fishing waters into the Wild West ripe for plunder. I will add there though, it remains to be seen what Boris will do regarding fishing. I'm sure it will be part of any deal with the EU. That we can be almost certain of, because it's more valuable to them than it is to the UK economy but we can only hope he doesn't sell out the fishermen with similar terms to what the EU has now. Only time will tell, and I will shit on him if or when he does sell them out, but it will be based on facts, unlike our friend here. Now, he also claimed that the fishermen must have been brainwashed or lacking the intelligence to realise that most of the fish caught here is not even eaten here, like that makes the slightest bit of difference to the fishermen, as I said earlier before coming out with what has to be one of the dumbest things I have ever heard that is almost Diane Abbott levels of stupidity. We, the UK, don't really like fish, was his claim. 
Now, I'm not sure what he's been smoking, but I can debunk that bullshit right now, at the same time as explaining the obvious reasons why we export more fish than we eat. Which, like I said, does not matter to the fishermen in the slightest, because obviously, they don't care what people do with the fish once they are paid for landing it on the docks. The individual fishermen don't export it themselves, do they dumbass, so it's no longer their problem to care, even if someone wants to stick it up their ass just for the shit and giggle of it. They won't care about that, so they also won't care if someone sends it to a foreign company as an export. But don't take my word for it, let's see what the UK Fisheries has to say about these claims, shall we? This here we have a UK Fisheries article. There are 10,500 fish and chip shops across the country, serving up 167 million fish and chip meals each year. UK consumers prefer cod and haddock, you might want to remember that for later guys. We eat these fish more than any other nation. This is the fish served most often in our fish and chip shops. Something we didn't really need them to tell us. Where it also adds, most of this comes from the Icelandic, Norwegian and Barents Seas. Where around one twelfth of the total is caught by the British trawler, Kerkella. Something we will still be able to do post Brexit. We can make them deals there, directly with Iceland and Norway ourselves. Don't need to be part of the EU for that. And just for a little bit of comparison, it has something here that is quite telling. There are currently 10,500 specialist fish and chip shops in the UK. These dramatically outnumber other fast food outlets. McDonald's only has 1,200, with KFC having just 840. So, quite a lot of fish and chip shops for a country that doesn't really like fish. And if the information in that article wasn't enough to prove that we eat plenty of fish, we have figures here from 2011 that shows at the time we ate more than 5.5 billion pounds worth of fish in this seafish.org study, which also lists the most popular fish to be eaten in the UK, with salmon, tuna, cod, haddock, prawns and mackerel all up there in the top, four of which we can catch in the UK and regularly do. But this study also has something else very important. In the UK, we export most of the seafood we catch in our waters. This is because foreign seafood markets greatly value UK species, while domestic consumers focus their purchases on a smaller range of species, such as cod, salmon and haddock, which are two of the top three fish species landed in the UK by UK fishermen. So yeah, first clip in and the bullshit given thus far is so easily debunked, it's unreal. Those two articles there come up near the top when looking for UK fishing and consumption. Spoiler alert though, this will be a theme of this entire video guys. Baseless claims with no evidence cited, just pure unhinged Ramona Bias. I think he needs to change the channel name to Ramona Bias personally. It would be more fitting and we have only seen a few moments of his video. Let's move on though. I know we're an island nation, and I know that fish and chips is like a national dish. We don't really eat that much fish. We eat less fish, and buy less fish more specifically, than, than all of the fish caught in British waters by specifically British fishermen. And actually quite a lot of the fish we have, we buy from outside anyway, because a lot of the fish that's, that's fished in British waters, a lot of it's not really to our taste, so most of that needs to be exported. Well, I'm glad in your fantasy world, sunshine, we are still an island nation at least. That is one bonus, but he's still stuck on the fact we don't eat much fish. Yeah, 5.65 billion pounds is not a lot of fish, is it? Despite there being 10,500 fish and chip shops and only 1,200 McDonald's, as we see earlier. But we don't really eat or like fish, do we? If you ask me, this is what happens when you do zero research on a subject and just spout crap. You actually make yourself believe the country does not like fish, and it seems a lot of these viewers have bought into this complete tripe also. Shocking shit, really. But I'm struggling to see what the fascination is with the fact we don't eat all of the fish our fishermen catch, like that means they are not being paid. Whether you order fish and chips, or it gets sold by a fishmonger to a foreign market that values fish caught in the British waters, the fishermen who land it still get paid, you idiot. Which is why fishermen continue to bring in more than we actually consume genius. How the fuck he didn't think of that most basic and obvious reason during the making of his video is beyond me. Unless, of course, he completely ignored it because it does not fit his Ramona bias. Now, he is right about one thing. While we do import a lot of fish to be eaten, our fishermen also catch a lot of the most popular fish eaten in the UK. 
namely cod, haddock, prawns, mackerel, pollock and sardines that are just in the top 10 that we like to eat the most, which, like I said, are all caught here, as you can see, and in great numbers for things like cod, haddock and mackerel. But this is something he even admits at the end of his video, because he eats haddock and it is caught here, therefore debunking his own bullshit. But let's continue, he has not finished yet. You know, so what that would mean is that if we went ahead with this lunacy, that all non-British fishing vessels, if they were to leave UK waters, never come back after Brexit, and, and no extra fish were caught by the remaining British fishermen, remember, they're expecting to catch more, but let's say no extra fish were caught, that would still be too much to sell. That is more than they can sell. And, you know, so the British fishermen would go out of business, especially the smaller operators, who actually thought they were going to be getting the biggest bonus out of Brexit, but they're now being shafted by Johnson. Sorry, mate, it's not if the lunacy happens, by which I'm guessing you mean Brexit, it's when it happens. We are leaving the EU on December the 31st. It's done and dusted. The Ramonas have lost so many times now, they actually can't stop it, no matter how hard they cry. The winners have spoken and kicked the Commissar and his motley crew of Ramonan shit weasels back into touch. It's done. I'm sorry to break that to you, Stop Brexit Steve of YouTube. Crying about it, denying it, ain't gonna help at the end of the day. But where in the hell did you get the delusional idea that if all foreign fishing boats stopped fishing our waters and British boats caught no more fish, they wouldn't be able to sell it? How does EU boats fishing in our waters make it easier for British fishermen to sell their fish and not being there mean they can't sell any? Surely they would be able to sell it at better prices due to less foreign owned boats trying to sell their goods. We, as a country, are still interested in making money, so we will still export our world famous fish that is prized in many foreign markets before Brexit and still will be after. I mean, even the EU will be begging us to export our wonderful fish to them regardless of anything, due to the outrage from the businesses over there that rely on it. So that whole clip there was a complete load of bollocks, about as based in reality as Jo Swinson claiming she would be the next Prime Minister, or the Labour Party's imaginary youth quake on the 12th of December that would keep the Tories out of government. I love this sort of shit, it really is comedy gold. Um, they wouldn't be able to sell the excess to Europe, which is what they do right now, because not only would their fish be much more expensive thanks to WTO tariffs, apparently WTO is only okay, uh, but angry EU nations who are pissed off that they're not able to have their fishermen fishing those waters are going to say at the thought of British fish coming into their markets, no, no, no. So they wouldn't even be able to get into their markets at the overpriced prices. Um, but that is just an obvious example of Brexit devouring its own children. That's not what I'm specifically talking about here. We've known about that for a while. I've talked about that before. Okay, so now we won't be able to sell fish to the EU because they will be much more expensive due to tariffs thanks to the WTO, which he fails to realise or mention are things we can set ourselves. Even in a WTO no-deal Brexit, the government already stated last year 80-90% to 90 of goods will be tariff-free. And since, as we see earlier, the UK fishing stocks are prized by other countries, including the EU, which is why their boats are so desperate to have access to our waters after Brexit, you complete idiot. If you think the EU are turning away exports of something they need, you must be smoking crack. People in many EU nations will go nuts at Brussels for preventing them getting goods from the UK. It's not just our fish they need more than we need them. You can't say that though, can you? Because it shits on your narrative against Brexit and of course Boris Johnson. The EU nations won't all of a sudden be okay with no UK fish being sold there. And let's be honest, in the highly unlikely event that they did this, there are like 170 other nations around the world who we can sell it to at prices and tariffs we set with them. The EU is a small part of the world, let's never forget that sunshine. But on the upside, he is finally going to get to the point of this video. So let's see what disaster he claims Brexit is going to do to the fishermen then. Hopefully it's more based in reality than the first few clips we have looked at. The way in which Brexit is going to kick small British fishing crews in the teeth has actually nothing to do with Brexit, really. <laughs> this is entirely to do with Boris Johnson, nothing even to do with the EU. So the way in which Brexit is going to affect British fishermen is not even because of Brexit. Oh yeah, nice way of admitting your video is nothing but clickbait. 
As you heard, it's a government decision not related to Brexit and the EU. But let's see what the actual terrible thing Boris plans to do that is so bad he needed to blame Brexit for the views. The government, that is Boris Johnson's government, just for clarity there, are calling for all boats, all British fishing vessels in English waters, to utilise an app that records information on the fish caught. Now, this is a requirement in the EU for larger vessels, but does not cover boats under 10 metres in length. As it happens, about 80% of all British fishing vessels are the smaller, under 10 metres in length. So most British fishermen didn't have to bother with this rule. It wasn't an issue for them. But in rides Brexit man, the alter ego of Boris Johnson, flying in faster than a HS2 train. He threw his arms aloft and declared that we're all going to enjoy greater freedoms now that we're outside of the EU. Except we're not outside of the EU. In 2021, we're outside of the EU. Hello, brave fishermen of England. Because as I say, this is just England. It's not happening for Wales or Scotland. They're not that stupid. No. Hello, brave fishermen, says Brexit man. Enjoy your newfound freedom by installing this monitoring app that the EU made you exempt from, but we're not going to. And with the good news delivered, off he rides into the sunset to piss on someone else's bonfire. Oh wow, fuck me, it's an app. So the big reason Boris has screwed the fishermen is because smaller boats need to use an app to track their catches. Not Boris Johnson is limiting the amount they can actually catch and therefore taking money away from them as you would be led to believe. Yes, it will be a bit of a pain in the ass getting used to the system and possibly could lead to restrictions being placed on them, but that is not what is happening here and now, is it? And given it's small boats we are talking about, the government is not likely to do anything lower than is currently set because Boris knows he will be roasted over an open fire the second he does. Not only by Ramonas like our friend here, but by Brexiteers and the media alike. I will be one of them Brexiteers taking a big shit on his long blonde hair the second he fucks over the people of this country. You can guarantee that. But I can't believe this guy has claimed Boris sold out the fisherman because he wants to introduce an app. What an absolute joke. I'm pretty sure the app is going to be the least of the issues for our fishermen. The trade deal is where he will sell them at if he is going to. And the only bonfire he has pissed on happens to be your bonfire, shit weasel. Ramona's bonfires have been thoroughly pissed on by 17.4 million Brexiteers for nearly four years now. It's a smouldering heap in the dirt where it belongs. But there is actually no point in going over any more of his video. He waffles on about Brexiteers voting for less red tape when they actually voted for the EU not to be in control of our country. Red tape was only an issue to Brexiteers when it was unelected fuckpigs in Brussels making the decisions on it. Most people here accept the democratic votes made and let our own elected officials make the calls because we can hold them to account at the ballot box. And of course, like the Remain Stream media, he pumps out the usual Ramona bullshit that says once we leave the EU, there will be endless paperwork in order to export. When we already know, companies will have six months to fill in customs declarations like they do now, and it will be the same after we have finally left the EU. I have shit on the Remain Stream media countless times on this exact subject, as you all know. But like I said though, I really didn't want to have to call out other YouTubers because there is nothing good about shitting on someone else's hard work. But in this case, something had to be said because it's filled with complete bullshit from start to finish, unfortunately. Now remember guys, don't bother harassing or shit talking this guy. I've done enough in this video going over what he said. That is all it requires. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I'll see you all in the next one. And Corbyn neutral by Christmas. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving.
and it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon!